Welcome back to Life With Us TV. This is your girl, Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right, listen. The reason that we are recording this video is because we recently just came off of a carnival cruise and you all have seen the vlogs. If you have not checked out our vlogs, then you are doing yourself a disservice. You need to go on over there and look at the vlogs. The vlogs yeah. were lit. But out of those vlogs came a whole lot of questions. Questions, man. So we yeah. posted on our community tab and we were like, okay, if there are questions that you want answered, leave them below. We'll do a separate video and we will answer them to the best of our abilities. So this is what this video is. But we will preface this by saying we did a live the other day and it was a lengthy live yeah. but i will tell oh, you I this love. not <laughs> just because it's us but if you are interested in going on a cruise in this pandemic i would say that you need to invest the time and look at that video we were candid about our experience right. we gave you the good bad and the ugly and that is exactly what we titled it after we published it live yep. we will link that down below in the video here because the wisdom nuggets that we threw out, boom. Yeah, this man. video is going to be a little different because we're just going to hit the points. We're not going to expound upon most of the stuff that we did over there. But we're about to get right into it. If you see me look over here, it's because the questions are on my monitor over here. Yeah. So, it's easier for me to do it that way. Yeah. you have anything before we get started? Let's get it on and popping. Alright, first question that we had was how many days was this cruise in the places that we went? We went on a carnival cruise. We went on the carnival sunrise. We went during the dates of August the 14th through August the 20th, yeah. I believe, Yes. Um, of this year. So the destinations were Ocho Rios, Jamaica and Bimini, Bahamas. Yes, indeed. All right. So how was it traveling to Jamaica? Was was there restrictions and was that the only port open? Same question for Bimini. Traveling to both ports was what it was. I mean, yeah. it was amazing. We didn't have any issues at all. What I will say is when you're in these other countries, they take their rules seriously. Yes, they do. It's not like it is in the United States where if I want to wear a mask, this is my right and I don't have to wear a mask. No, you will wear the mask over there and until they tell you not to um i wish we had captured some of that on camera yeah. of them even telling us when we were outside yeah i was gonna say like <laughs> jamaica was more more strict. strict with the mask than bimini was yeah yeah, yeah. but yeah they're not playing around um did y'all have to take the jab before leaving out for this cruise and when you say the jab that is the vaccine we took the vaccine way, way yeah. before. And what I will say is that is a personal decision. Yes. And we made that decision based off of the dynamic of our household. We have an aging mom that lives mm -hmm. here with us. And we also like to travel. Exactly. At some point, we tried to let this thing level out so that we wouldn't have to get it. But seeing that it didn't level out, we made the decision for what it is that we want to do going forward. Exactly. Um, was we hesitant in the beginning? Yes, absolutely. we was. We, <laughs> yeah, we, we was. We let all the healthcare workers. Oh, everybody else get <laughs> it first. first. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you have to take the COVID test even though you're vaccinated? So right now, as we speak, these rules change almost daily. Trust me, as a travel agent, I see them change daily. They changed in the middle of us um, booking this cruise and going and planning and all that. The rules changed on us. As of right now, Carnival is going on a 95-5%, 95% vaccinated, 5% not vaccinated. That is about to change too because right. ports of call are now saying that we need your ships to be at 100% vaccinations because we don't want them here if there's 5% people on board that, does, that are not vaccinated. So, with that <laughs> said, we still had to test. That was a change for us. Yeah. We booked this, this. That was not a part of the deal. We had to get a COVID test 72 hours before, before mm -hmm. we were able to go. We could get the antigen test because we are vaccinated. But if you are not vaccinated and have pre-approval, see, if you're not vaccinated, you still have to get pre-approval to even sail. Yep. So if they say, oh, okay, you're one of the selected few that can sail unvaccinated, you have to get a PCR test. And those are the ones that take at least a couple of days to get your results back. I can imagine that that's stressful as heck. 
Because that little 30 minutes we waited for hours yeah, was stressful. It was, stressful. <laughs> it was very stressful. Yeah, and, and another piece of that, that we was nervous that if you had got a positive COVID test, you had to cancel your cruise, but you couldn't get your money back. It was going to be a crew credit. Cruise credit. And we don't want no credits. We was like, <laughs> <laughs> we, we, either want, last year. Yeah, we either wanted to go or, or if we couldn't go get our money back. Right. So that was another pressure that was applied as well. Yeah, it, it was yeah. a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. <laughs> I said, I'm going on the sunrise next week. How was the check-in process? <laughs> if you work, if you looked at our live, you will see that we said that the process is repetitive. But yeah. I can give Miami credit that their process is fast. Yeah. So although you go through the same steps like three or four times, you still will probably be checked in within an hour. Yeah. So although it's, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's frustrating because yeah. you'll go and they'll ask for your board pass this, boom. They ask for this, 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 boom. You'll go somewhere else. You think you're in the clear of needing the same stuff presented. Oh, can I yeah. see? And I'm like, how many times you going to ask me yeah. for this? Yeah, because it came frustrating because every time after we stopped, we took and put our stuff back in our bags because we thought we was getting ready to get we on the ship. We were in the clear. So now you got to keep putting your bag back on, go in and pull it out. So yeah, mm -hmm. but it was it wasn't that long. It was. It was. Next question was, how was it compared to pre-COVID? Did you feel safe? Did Carnival follow protocols to ensure traveler safety? What was one of the things you missed that they took away or changed? I enjoyed watching you all's vacation. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. First question was, how is it compared to pre-COVID? Other than the... Then the mask, the mask and the vaccination and stuff, it felt nothing. I yeah, mean, it was, it was the same. exact same. Like, yeah, it was there, the same. There was not a beat skipped. Right. Were there things that we noticed that they took away because of COVID? I, I don't. Did, I didn't notice anything. Everything that they, they took away, I really say was a positive for us. They took away the menu, so everything was on a yeah. QR code system. Mm -hmm. They took away the gathering for the muster drill. Yeah. That was on your phone. The only thing you had to do was show up at your muster station and they scan your card, give you a give you a no, they didn't even give us a sticker. Yeah, no, they they didn't. scanned the card to um check you in. That was it. Like well, yeah, other than that, everything was, was pretty much the same. Yeah. Um yeah. did Carnival follow protocols to ensure traveler safety? We spoke about this on our live. We say kinda. <laughs> That's what I say. Kinda. <laughs> they did enough to to pass the CDC's recommendations for safety. Exactly. Exactly. And once you were on board, yeah. you did whatever the buck you wanted to do, and there were no repercussions of doing. Yeah, because they would say that if they catch you yeah. without your mask on, they'd be like, "Sir, ma'am, put your mask on," and you'd be like, "Boom!" Then they're gone. Boom. <laughs> and then. And then and even sometimes that we were in the in the club, that was where you really saw that yeah. people didn't pay them any mind at all. Like they would make the announcement on this dance floor, you need to have your mask on. And people was like, "Oh, they're okay. talking to me." Uh -huh. Yeah, they make talking everybody to me. dancing. <laughs> yeah, and he, and when we first got on the cruise, the the way around that was have a drink in your hand. Mm -hmm. After a while, that wasn't even the thing. It was just, if I didn't want to wear my mask, I don't wear my mask. The only place I saw that it was really enforced is if you're going into like the buffet area. Yeah, going through there, Or if you're yeah. going into the dining room, you have somebody standing there with disposable masks. Yeah. So if you didn't have yours on, they would give you one. But anywhere else? Yeah, that's that's what I got on. Um, got busted at. <laughs> yeah, and and like we said, we had walked all the way around the ship, not mm -hmm. even realizing that he didn't have a mask on. Yep. And it wasn't until we got to the dining area it was like, where it was like, your mask. <laughs> like, oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so, so did you have to have a COVID test coming back? You do not, no. as of now. You do not have to have a COVID test to exit the ship. But I will say this personally, because of the atmosphere that you place yourself into, although everyone that is on that ship, it has tested negative to be able to go cruising. There is always that chance that you can be in contact with somebody that has it and they yeah. don't have any symptoms. So what we did was soon as we landed, well, we, our plan was, Y'all don't even want to hear about our nightmare coming home. <laughs> our plan was as soon as we landed, we would go to CVS and get, get a rapid yeah. test before we came home and integrated with my mom. But we didn't land until like after midnight. Yeah. So that next morning we got up and we right. did a rapid test. 
negative, thank yeah. God. And since we know that it's best to test when you think that you, like five days, five or six These days, days after afterwards, you yeah. think you have been exposed to something. So we tested again yeah. six days later just to make sure we did yeah. that at CVS and that was also, also negative. negative. Yep. So that would be my recommendation to anybody. Yeah. It don't let them make it required for you. you just make do it, it for yourself. Just do it. It'll yeah. give you that, that peace, peace of, of mind, mind. Yep. that you're okay. You're not passing anything <clears> on to <throat> anybody else. Right. And that you can just go ahead and live your life like you did before you went right. on this cruise because there's always that chance. And yeah, if you already been tested, it, it ain't taboo no more. It's still no. the same. Like the um the only one with that they did was the one we did afterwards and he the dude did the swab before us. Yeah. But CVS we did our own, so it was it's, it's no big deal. No, they don't go to your brain anymore. Nah, uh -uh. They realize now they don't have to touch your brain. Yeah. <laughs> It's still weird though, but they, yeah. Yeah, very, very doable. Yeah. Um, so how was the testing process during, um, before boarding? We touched on that. That was 72 hours. They don't do it at the cruise port. Nah. So let me go ahead and say that. Nah. That's been something that has been getting a lot of people in trouble. That they think that they can show up to the cruise port and be like, okay, test me now. They're not mm. doing it there. They don't, have right time. They, they don't have time. They really don't have time. They don't have time. If you are flying into Fort Lauderdale or Miami, vet this information because I have not, but I have heard in so many of the forums that I'm in that you can test at the airport when you land. Hmm. And you can do it. I think it said it was like $79 a test. They get it within 20 minutes. Vet that information. Hey, that's too risky though. <laughs> but that is too risky. That's too right. risky. Yeah, that's too risky. Yeah, you land and then you're positive. Then what? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah, get it done before you get, before you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> How was it being on a cruise during a pandemic and where's their social distancing? So we hit on the first part already. Yeah. Was there social distancing, social distancing where? No. No social, no. Where? No. And listen, at first, for me and my husband, we have taken this COVID thing seriously. Yeah, we have. That is the reason that we even chose cruising <clears throat> as our form of vacation this year because the protocols and the procedures that they had in place made us feel a little bit more yeah, uh, with, that yeah. we could we could get there safely yeah. and we can leave out safely without contracting anything. And we love international travel, but we love to fly into international territory. But there's also that risk that you can test positive internationally yeah. and you can't come back home. So that was another reason we decided to cruise because even if you test positive on board, you are entered back into yeah. U.S. territory and you could, you know, go into quarantine in whatever state it was that you sailed out of. So it would be exactly. Florida for us. So we would still be home in our territory. And if we needed to, we could drive back home rather than being stuck. In international territory exactly. not being able to get home how was the restrictions on the cruise we touched on that yeah, but yeah. they said i saw that the buffet was open how was that handled <laughs> yeah you serve yourself yeah, it yeah, was you, handled you, like that you yeah. scoop and you move you now know. it was one guy that y'all saw he did was serving us but it was like, like potatoes yeah, stuff towards the back but all the stuff towards the front yeah and that was a shocker yeah. for me yeah but yeah buffet was wide open and yeah. it, it really shocked me so after and I'm not even a buffet person, but on embarkation day, that really is the only place you could get food quickly mm -hmm. because everybody is everywhere else. Yeah. So we did it. We scoop, move, we clean, we clean, we clean, and we made it back with a negative. <laughs> 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 um, it says, were you comfortable on the Lido deck with the open buffet? Um, everyone touching the utensils, etc. Um, did the cruise line take proper precautions? We just talked about that yeah. part. Um, you begin to feel a little bit more, more comfortable, comfortable as yeah, as yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. At you, first, you want to yeah. walk around with a hula hoop around you to just make people stay away from you, and then after a wow. while, yeah. you, you settle into the fact that okay, we're here, mm -hmm. we're here to have a good time. You know, you you even saw us in the pool surrounded by people that we don't know. Normally, when we do something like that, 
No. no. But you kind of settle into it and your 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 fail safe is is that everybody has been vaccinated. Except for the five percent, but you don't and, know who that five percent is. And negatively tested. Yeah, so 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 you felt a little bit more yeah, more free to do some more stuff that you yeah. Yeah, so yeah. um how was the cleanliness? They cleaned. They cleaned, yeah. When I yeah. say they cleaned, I, yeah. I've never seen <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, because they would drain. We only see them drain one pool, which is in the back, which we think they drained them all. Yeah, and they would drain them and clean the pools every single night, which was dope. Yeah. Um. So, did you feel that they did everything to keep you safe, and what were some of the things you felt could have been done better? I don't know if I feel like they did everything to keep us safe. Like I said, they did enough to get us on board, follow the restrictions, and really. At this point in our lives of being in this pandemic, you're responsible for keeping yourself as safe as you need right. to feel. Like with us, our masks have N95 filters in our masks. So whenever we were around people that we don't know, we pretty much had our masks on until you saw us recording. Right. And we would take it off because, of course, who wants to be able to try to listen to us through a mask? Yeah. Um, what they could have done better, and I have said that this part even about the grocery stores here and restaurants and things like that they don't pay people enough money for them to be fighting with people to make them do what they're supposed to do during this pandemic right so for me i would have hoped that the cruise lines would hire outside people to be on board to regulate this thing mm. To make sure that these people are wearing their masks. They don't pay these cruise line people enough money to fight with you. Right. And, and we saw that. I would say the flip side of that was that I appreciated that the crew kept their masks on at all times. So that part really did make me safe. It was only one time that we saw a crew member to take their mask off was when we was at the dining room for her birthday. Yeah. And the guy took his mask off to assimilate, you know, fireworks. He said... <sighs> For, and that was the only time other the only than that, time. the cabin stewardess, the people that was in the hallway cleaning, the people in the dining room at the restaurants, yeah. casino, they kept their masks on at all times. All times. All times. And most of them had N95s on. Yes, they did. So, next question. Did we encounter anyone getting sick during the cruise? What was the process? And would you guys do another cruise at this time? <laughs> all right. Did we encounter someone getting sick on the cruise? Yes. yes. Um, and let me, let's talk about the process of being on a cruise ship. Like we said, if you're vaccinated, you have to do the negative COVID test. You don't have to test during the duration of your cruise. Yeah. But if you are that 5% that is selected, like we said, you have to have pre-approval to be selected to be unvaccinated and, and to be able be on board. You also have to agree to a COVID testing every 48 hours. So within that 48 hour turnaround of testing, one of those unvaccinated guests did test positive. Yeah. And it was treated like a hospital treats it. Mm -hmm. Everything was, it was sectioned off. Hash hazmat masks suits, on suits, hash masks on. They yep. could not move. They had to be quarantined to their cabin. Mm -hmm. They only were able to get their food delivered. And of course they could open the door, put their trait outside their door so that people can come with the hazmat suits take their food away all that good stuff they were closely monitored by by the medical staff on board did we ever feel like they treated that part lightly no um, they no, treated it yeah, yeah seriously. serious with that yeah <laughs> and even anyone that was in the cabin with them like they locked down that whole cabin mm -hmm. and they locked down i think they they moved them to an area of the ship where they had it locked um you kind of like blocked off for the situation. So we saw it. It was actually on our floor. Yeah, it was on our floor. <laughs> um, and, I, and I realized now why they did it. Because we were on the cab, um, the balcony floor. Yeah. So they did it so that, you know, they are able to get, you know, fresh breeze and things like that. But would we do this again in a pandemic? Um, I would say. I would say, uh, yeah. Yeah, I would say. If they're going, if this going to the right destinations, the places that we want to go, we'll then do it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, because like we said, it didn't it didn't feel any differently. Right. It was just that the COVID test is a lot. It's a lot mentally because you just never know. You could have it and you don't know. 
Um, and yeah, we would do it again. <laughs> yeah. Without even going deep into it, we would do it again. <laughs> All right. So next set of questions, which we're going to change up a little bit. What type of cruise would you recommend for first timers? Length, location, what are your favorite activities? And did you have enough relaxation time or is it hard to do it with so much going on on the ship? First timers, I would say no more than five days because you just never know. Like my first cruise, I was sick as a dog. Yeah, you was. That <laughs> seasickness. With sea bands on. My. You got sick with sea bands on. <laughs> listen, I was calling Earl so much that anything over five days, I probably would have had to go see the medic because you just, you just don't know what your body is going to do. Then after that, I've been fine ever since. Have mm -hmm. never been sick on a cruise since. Um, so I say five days destination is really what your interest is yeah, yeah and what type yeah. of person you are yeah i will say that if you're a person that's a little bit more like timid or you know you get a little anxious in crowds with aggressive people i would say stay away from the bahamas as your first time cruising don't go there because people you know they, they that's, are that's how little, they make their living right yeah, they so, are a yeah. little aggressive but yeah if you're used to that type of atmosphere, like for instance, if you're from New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, you know, you're used to people being all up in your face like that. Yeah. But if you're not, don't go there. I and and they're not going to hurt you. Don't, they they're not, they not going to hurt yeah. you. They're going to they, press they, hard for the sale. They're yeah. going to press hard for the sale. Yeah. Um, yeah, so <laughs> just pretty much line it up with what your, your interests are, what your personality is. But we were told that Jamaica was like that as well, but we didn't experience that. Yeah. And maybe because of, because because of, of the, the pandemic. pandemic. But yeah, Jamaica wasn't like that this time. Yeah. They, were they was like, the stuff is over here, so you to buy when you get back from Dunn's River. And that, was that didn't bother us at yeah, all. I was shocked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, what else? Um, would you recommend this cruise for a first timer? When we first, when I first read this question, I was like, I'm going to say no. But then after having a talk with my husband the other night and really like putting life into perspective right now, do it. Yeah. You don't know if you're going to be here next year. You don't know if you're going to be here next week. Right. So ultimately, and in, in, if we could control the world and control the way things are, I would say wait it out and do it when things are a little bit more normal. But if you have an opportunity to get out there and do things right now, and do if it. you feel like you can carefully do it and vet vet out whatever it is you yeah. want to do, figure out the best solution for where it is you want to go, yeah. do it, do it. And when she made in the conversation, I said, I told her like after going through COVID-19, it's caused me to look at life more serious. And what we end up doing is we like to defer life. So like if something is happening this weekend, nah, I'm not going to do it this weekend. I'm going to defer it. I will do it next weekend. Nah, I'll do it next weekend. So you want to do a cruise? I do a cruise after, you know, COVID-19. But you ain't guaranteed. You know, COVID showed us that stuff can come along and take our life again, shut us down. And then you be like, darn, I wish I had took that cruise or during I wish I went to Florida or or Vegas or whatever it is you want to do yeah. I say don't allow your fear to keep you from living life yeah because you know because tomorrow is not promised the only thing promised to us is right now at this yeah. moment right now it's the only thing that's promised so if you want to do a trip do it man just go ahead and do it do it and we've, we've seen that sentiment in our videos mm -hmm. where people was like oh I got a cruise or something planned for 2023 not to knock that we have a lot of stuff planned for 2023 too but at the same time we have to figure out how to move in this new normal. Yeah, we do. But we also have to do it in a way that pleases our particular circumstance. Yeah. You may not feel comfortable doing so. You may have children or you're, you know, with us, we have an aging parent in the house, but we don't have children to, you know, have to put it to the equation at, you know, so your yeah, risk so may not be my risk. And vice yeah, versa. do what works for you. It might but be, do something. Yeah, it might be because it's it not just, good for this. It might be a, a trip right in your hometown. You know, a hotel that you wanted to stay at. You know, That's it. whatever it is. Yeah, a holiday in, do something. Yeah, do something. Yeah. Next question is: I'm planning a cruise for my son and I. He will be just 18 when we go. Is there a cruise line that offers more for kids his age? Because he doesn't fit into kids groups, 
but he's too young for adult activities. I will honestly say um, Carnival is going to be your best bet. It mm -hmm. is the fun ship. There's going to be something that he is able to find himself something to, connect with. to yeah. do. And not only that, because it is the fun ship, you find that a lot of families bring kids around that age. He's he going to find somebody to link up with. Yeah. He's going to have a ball. Trust me. We do this cruise every year with our family. And there's never a dull moment with any of the age groups. Nope. They find somebody to hang with and they have a ball. Yeah, they do. Um, going on this is that cruise in two weeks. Is there anything you wish you had packed or happy that you did pack to make your trip more comfortable? Um, I am an overthinker. So I think Me of too. everything. <laughs> but one of the things that if you are a person that knows that you're going to be doing water sports or any kind of water activity, make sure you bring like Ziploc bags to keep your money in, to kind of keep your money um, from getting wet. wet. Mm -hmm. Also, um, the pouches for your phone, it's a dual purpose for me because even if I'm not in the water, sometimes I'll just take my phone and put it in the um, waterproof mm -hmm. pouch. That way I can be as hands-free as possible. Another thing is, and this is a major purchase, so if you're not a person that's into photography and videography, this may not be something that you're interested in. But if you want to capture those memories, make sure you are investing in a GoPro. Yeah. <laughs> and and we not and we and we not judging because we just bought one for this trip. Yes. So yes. most of the footage that you saw so in Bimini, that was that was Bimini, the GoPro. Bimini and um, Jamaica, Jamaica was the GoPro. Was the GoPro. And yep. if we did not have that GoPro we would not have had as much of, of that footage, footage. That yeah. we, because we would have to rely on our phones yeah. to do so. And it's not as easy to record on your phone as you would think it is in those, you know, in that situation. So those are the things. And for me, a fanny pack, I'm a fanny pack girl. I don't care if it goes out of style. I'm still going to wear my fanny pack because it's like my... It's like my my um my old toodles. <laughs> what do you have in your bag? I got everything in my bag. So make sure that you're just doing like your sanitizer wipes and your um microband and just stuff like that. Yeah, for for me, the only thing that um I regret not taking was my swimming goggles. Mm. Yeah, because I wanted to be able to go in the water and see what's going on and stuff. But because I wear contacts, that's, that wasn't enough. Wasn't a possibility on this time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and water shoes. Yes. Water. water shoes are a freaking must. Yeah. But I do wish that I had a beach bag. I had a backpack, but I wish that I had a real beach bag. I didn't have that on this trip. Next question. I truly enjoyed the vlogs. Thank you so much. Um, I really don't like to fly. How do we feel about cruising? from ports that leave from your local destination like New York or Baltimore because they're easier for me to get into without flying. Listen, this is our first time flying into yeah, a port. Yeah, first time. Yep. Because of your exact sentiment. Not because we don't like to fly, because we'll get on a flight. Oh yeah, in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat, we don't even think about it. But for us, we've never seen the value in flying out and getting on a cruise ship when we have two or even three if you really yeah, want right to drive um, that you're able to go to but with that said you are limited to the destinations mm -hmm. as well because here you're only going to go to mm -hmm. Bermuda, Bahamas, Freeport Yeah, and you may luck up and they may take you to their private island that's it. that's it but if you don't feel comfortable with flying yeah, do, do what works for yeah, you. Exactly. Um, yeah, I don't see a problem with that at all. It makes life a whole lot easier. Trust me. Yes, because indeed. flying out to a port is stressful. We, yeah. We, yeah. Yeah. Don't don't do what we did. We flew in the day of. Don't do that. Don't do that. And I'm a <laughs> and I'm a travel agent. I know better, and I did it. So don't do what Lynette does. Um, were your meals, drinks, um, and any of the bars included in your cruise costs? I wish. Mm. But all of your meals, now, no, let me not say all, mostly all of your meals will be included in your cruise fare. Um, you can look that up, carnival.com is where we were, so look that up. You'll be able to see those different places where you do have, have to, to pay. pay. Uh -huh. It's very few, Yeah. but I will say if you have an opportunity to splurge and do so, do so. Yes. You're not going to be disappointed with any of them. 
drinks drinks um when we talk about drinks i'm assuming you're meaning alcoholic beverages no uh, they are not included you have to pay for those um what else um but you do have some drinks in the drink machines like your orange, orange juice, juice water lemonade, passion, passion fruit tea juice. Yeah. Um, your coffee as you're sitting down in the dining rooms, so those are all included. Uh, yeah. Um, water, not bottled water. Just yeah. Regular, regular water. Tap yeah. water. Um, Which is good on the ship. It actually was yeah, good. Really I, good. I didn't mind it this yeah, time. Yeah, it was real good. Yeah. Um, how early or late should you book a flight home on the debarkation day? <laughs> I would not book a flight no earlier than 1 p.m. As close to 1:30 ish. You can get, I would say, try to get that and get up out of there because you will be left with a whole lot of idle time. Hmm. But yeah, I say anything after one o'clock, you should be fine. Even if any mishaps happen, because I think we got off the ship nine, nine o'clock. Something like that. Nine, nine o'clock, yeah. Yeah. And we took our good little time getting off the yeah, ship. Yeah, we did. We were, we were off by nine o'clock. So one, you should be fine said what's included in the intake cost of a carnival cruise and were some activities and food places closed i didn't notice that any of the activities or or in the food, food places venues were, were like, closed like everything looked like everything was on and popping to me yeah and what's included in your intake cost is of course your cruise fare the taxes mm -hmm. um you do have to pay extra for your gratuities mm -hmm. your insurance right if you want you know, alcoholic beverages, or if you want soda, things like that. But for the most part, if you don't want to spend any more money, you'll be fine. You mm -hmm. still have to pay your gratuities, of course, yeah. and you would want to do those. Yeah, exactly. And I would say, if you're traveling, and especially now, you need the vacation insurance. Yeah. Traveling without vacation insurance right now it's is just, high risk. That's yeah. That's yeah. Way what you could what you say if you get sick and they gotta fly you up off of the ship is like twenty thousand. Twenty thousand dollars. Yeah. Do you have twenty thousand dollars laying around just to piss away for a helicopter you ride? Say, say you know for what what was it like seventy something dollars or something like that? Yeah. Well, it depends on your cruise but, costs, yeah. but no more than eighty bucks. Yeah. Eighty bucks. Twenty thousand bucks. <laughs> yeah, real talk. Yeah, and if you're like me, you like to get your stuff into stuff on cruises. You might need to use it. No. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna talk about it. Not gonna talk about it at all. Um, which is better, Carnival Cruise or Princess Cruises? I've never cruised on Princess, princess yeah. so I would have to say it's for us, Carnival. Carnival. Us. Mm -hmm. But of course. You can research that and figure that out for yourself because your personality may be you more of the princess. princess. Yep. Um, do you leave tips for those cleaning your rooms, changing your sheets? Um, did they have snorkeling or jet skis, fishing excursions? My son graduates next year. And would it be cheaper to book for a family of five right now? All right, tips. I also, re I always recommend pre-praying your gratuities. Yeah. Actually, you get a little bit of a discount when you do it. But for one, they're going to charge it to your card anyway. Anyway, yep. So you might as well just go ahead and lump it into your cruise fare. Get it out the way. And I also, this is just me personally because I am a tipper. I believe in taking care of the people that take care of you. Yes. Is those people that you come in contact with that just made a great impression or made your trip so much more special for you. Tip those people. Just give them a couple of dollars. Um, your room steward, if you feel like they are going above, above and, and beyond, beyond, yeah, you know, put a little something on the bed for them to take with, you know. Yeah. Um, I've heard people say they give them supplies and things like that, but I've also heard crew members saying they don't have enough space <laughs> for the supplies that people, they love it, but at the same time, if you have 20 guests giving you supplies, that's a lot. That's a lot to have to figure out what to do with it. And their cabins are teeny tiny. So give them money. They can buy whatever it is that they want to buy. Yeah, uh, but people yeah. that deliver, if you order room service. Tip those people. Tip those people. Even though because on the the thing, that's pre on a thing too. Yeah. But yeah, you can give yeah. them extra. Yeah. Now, if you get somebody that you feel like didn't do anything above and beyond, that's your prerogative. Yeah. You don't have to give them anything extra. Um, we didn't give everybody anything extra, but... You know, those that really made an impact. Yeah, we definitely. Did. All right, the snorkeling gear and the jet skis. That all depends on whatever destination that you're going to. Yeah. Um, for Jamaica, I can't remember them having 
either one of those, but Bimini had both. Yeah, they did. They had fishing excursions, they had the snorkeling they jet, had jet skis. skis. Yeah. We were kind of envious of the jet skis and we yeah. kind of <laughs> we kind of found out later on cuz the girls that we were all we kept bumping into told us that yeah. <laughs> for us to do jet skis in Bimini would have been $300. Mm -hmm. Everybody looked at each other and said, "We're not paying $300 to jet ski." There's the ferry boat that comes over to Bimini every day as well, not every day. Pretty often as well. They only charge them a hundred dollars. I was like to what? do jet skis on the island. Like, so if you're what? with so if you're with Carnival and they know you're with Carnival, it's three hundred dollars because they take that money and they have to split it with Carnival. But yeah. if you come on the ferry, it's a hundred dollars. Yep. So the girls heard them say it. So what they did was they hid their um, sign and sale card yep. and they walked like, over and they were like, like we are y'all on the cruise? And no, they was like, we no. cruise. We came over <laughs> on the ferry and they was like, okay, $100. Like, darn, man. I was man. like, whoa. And they yep. had them a good time. They went past us. I was like, y'all know they didn't pay $300. I was going to the jet ski. <laughs> they was like, oh yeah, we did it for $100. So would it be better to book for a family of five right now? If you see a good cruise rate and you feel like if all else fails, this is a good price for you, lock it down now. But make sure that when you're, if you call in the carnival and they book it for you, or if you're doing it with a travel agent, make sure that your agent is booking you into a rate that you can adjust going forward. Right. Because as this cruise goes on, the rates go up and they go down. If you're in a rate that can be adjusted, your your um, travel planner, your um, travel agent, or even Carnival can slide you back down into that rate, reduce your cost. Now, are they going to reduce it and give you the money back? No, they're going to give it to you as an onboard credit. So that's why I said, if you feel like the rate that you see right now is, is a good rate for you and your family, lock it down. Then if the rate goes down, then you can take that extra money as onboard credit and do stuff on board. You know, treat your family to specialty dinner or go towards your picture packages or whatever that you want to do on board. Yeah. So how was the food on the ship? It was meh. It was hit and miss. Especially the, the main dining room was hit and miss. Um, yeah. Anything that we paid for was superb. Yes. But I will be honest with you. I think the food on the buffet was the was the best. Best. <laughs> yeah, like like lasagna I had, lasagna was oh fire. Oh my god. The um salmon benedict at breakfast was fire. Listen. The alligator that I tried What's was good? fire. The seafood, of course, the shrimps I yeah. had was fire. Uh what else do we have? Calamari. The calamari the, 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 the delivered pizza for home for the home. Brought to the cabin yeah, was is good. fire. Yeah. So if you can splurge on that five dollar um delivery fee to get the pizza brought to you, yeah, it's much better than the pizza that you can yeah, go to. Yeah, that free pizza is much better. Yeah, <laughs> we learned that on our last cruise. So if we really want pizza, we just order it in and just pay the so, five yeah. bucks. So we said all that it was it was hit and miss. All so, right. Yeah. <laughs> so we answered the question: What was our favorite dish? Um, were the drinks and excursions included? I wish. I wish. No, nah, that's extra. That is extra. <laughs> <laughs> um, did y'all get the Cheers drink package? And if so, did it include drinks from the Alchemy Bar? We did yeah. end up getting the Cheers package. And let me tell you how that happened. <laughs> because if y'all don't know, my husband is a numbers guy. He the crunches numbers. numbers. The, the drink numbers was going up. It was the cost was like. But he didn't two, take two, into two. account the entire picture. When the first day on a cruise is the day that you just act up. So I had told him already. When I get on board, I'm gonna get the picture of margarita. You gonna help me drink it? Neither one of us drink like that. Nah. Nah. So. But I was determined I was gonna drink on this trip. <laughs> <laughs> so I got the picture with tax. And everything. I think the picture came up to like $34. Yeah, $34. Yeah, something like that. So then Stanley got a couple of more of the specialty drinks, which they only offer on um, embarkation day. So by the end of the day, we were almost up to like $90 because when you get those drinks individually, keep that in was mind. Only four drinks. Keep in mind that they put 18% gratuity on yep. each of those drinks mm -hmm. right off top. So we had easily gotten to almost $90 on day one. Yeah. 
And that was just four. That was just four. That won't. That won't include the margaritas. That was four regular drinks. Was almost ninety dollars. So he started freaking out. Was like, oh no no no, because if we keep at this pace, and I said, baby, we're not gonna keep at this pace. And he was like, no no no, at this pace, we. I, I said, you know what? We, I'm gonna let him settle on this tonight, and I'm gonna see if he bring that skit up again tomorrow. And because sure with the Cheers package, you have an opportunity to buy it on board day one and day two. And day two, after day two, you can't you can't get it in, on board anymore. Right. So day two, he's still on the same sentiment. He actually woke up that morning. We went to the uh, Serenity Deck, and he ordered a rum and coke. And I said, Oh, we gonna get this package because I know him. The numbers are adding up in his yeah. head. So we ended up buying the Cheers package. And I don't know if I'm going to say I feel like it's worth it. I will say that it took that level of pressure of trying to make sure that you're staying within your budget, in your daily budget. It took that away because you just, you just paid it. <laughs> um, and for us, it made us drink more. Because we felt like we had to get no. our money's worth. It, didn't make, well, yes, it, might, it, made it you, might have made you drink. I was determined I was going to drink. On it, that was I had pre-planned that before I said I'm gonna have myself a good time. I'm gonna drink, and when I started seeing the cost go, I was like, wait a minute, this is gonna like if we continue this rate, we're gonna spend way more than that drink package because of that 18% gratuity. Yeah, it was, and like she said, it took the pressure off of having it to did. be like, okay, how much this cost? Okay, how much we gonna spend now? Yeah, so it it freed you. It did. It freed you. It freed. It you. gave you what we love all-inclusive vacation right so it gave you that feel that you can just do just go to the bar give me a drink like mo. yeah it's not an extra and because the 18 percent is not on it 18 percent is all it, it. it's all included yeah so and not only is the drinks um alcoholic drinks included in that we were getting alkaline water bottles mm -hmm. we were getting especially coffee yeah milkshakes like milkshakes. we didn't take it Advantage of, but Gatorades. Oh, we didn't show sodas. We didn't show y'all the Spike coffee. Oh my God. Yeah, we got a um, Jameson coffee. You got it, and, and I, I got a rum based coffee. Then I got that Irish cream coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Bomb. Bomb. Yeah. I think one of those is actually Dre's favorite too, as well. Yep. But yeah, were the drinks at the Alchemy Bar included in Cheers? Yep. Yes. Here they are. And a lot of people didn't know that. They thought that because the Alchemy Bar seems like it's such an elite place. Yeah, they And got that it. it's untouchable that, oh, it has to be extra kind of like the steakhouse or something. Knowledge. Nope. But no, it's included. And the crazy thing about it for me, it just blew my mind, that those drinks that are handcrafted for you are the same price as that pre-made craft yep. that they give you at the other bars that's going to give you a headache and a hangover. It's the same price. And the quality is night and day. Night and day, I'm telling you. So yeah. if you do get the drink, I mean, not even if you do get the drink package. If you want to get a few drinks, make your way to the Alchemy Bar. Yes. You're, you're gonna you're gonna thank me I, <laughs> later. I say that Carnival should make the Alchemy standard all over the ship. All over the ship. I agree. Yeah, and get rid. You know, maybe keep some of the other like pre mix You know, some because people still like, like the those. pina coladas. Yeah, stuff like that. On the lips. But all the rest of the stuff. They should be alchemy standard for real. I agree. So if you don't hear carnival, that's a good suggestion. Do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, say so is the alcohol package economical? Do you have to pay for soda or water juice? So if you get the package, pretty much you you've bought all of that. So if you want juice, water, all that stuff, if you buy the drink package, it's included in that. Do I think it's economical? No, because even on day two, we still paid over five hundred dollars for that package. Yeah. I think that it. That Carnival needs to have a tier package when it comes to that um, drink packaging thing because everybody's not going to drink 15 drinks a day. I mean, I think... No, nah, we know we get to 15. I don't even think we got to five. Yeah. <laughs> but coming to the five without It the makes drink you package, break even. Yeah, drink, I, well, to me coming with the five, getting four at almost 90, you take five, you over 100. So that's you do five, I do five. That's like, what, like 200 something, $300 for that? We're but she, like, but yeah, we yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all know we divided on this thing, right? Um, so we can talk about it, but I will say from going forward, we probably will do the package. Yeah, for the for at least the freedom. Listen, listen. Yeah, for the freedom, I had to calculate. If we cost. fly in, because if we don't fly in, 
Yeah, we, we have yeah, ways. Yeah, we got. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we gonna bring our own. Yeah. I'm just gonna say it. Yeah, I know it's frowned upon, but hey, five hundred dollars. Oh, or a smuggle. <laughs> I'll take a smuggle. Um, when is the YouTube cruise? Y'all not gonna let us live, y'all. Yeah, y'all ain't gonna let us live. <laughs> um, if and when there's a YouTube cruise. It would definitely be heavily, heavily, heavily announced. Yes, it will. Um, and it's going to be a good guy doing time if we do that. It says, can you bring your own beverages on board? Beverages, the only thing that you can bring on board is canned beverages. And you can bring a 12-pack. And yes. you can bring um, and a, a wine. Yep, 750 milliliters, milliliters of, wine. of wine. Yeah. But you cannot bring bottled water. You have to pr um, purchase that from the fun shops because mm -hmm. people have been taking those and filling them up with liquor. liquor. <laughs> so, yeah, you can bring your sodas. Um, it doesn't even have to be sodas. You can do canned juices as long as it's in a can and it's 24-pack. Or you can bring six-pack if that's all you want. But, yes, you can bring those. Nothing else. Um, did we try any new drinks? And if so, which one of those drinks put you under? All right. <laughs> for us, I think a lot of the drinks for us was new because we're not, we're not drinkers. Um, my thing is, I'm a tequila girl. So if you can do anything with tequila, I'm pretty much that chick. I will say that if you give me a drop of rum, I'm done. I don't know <laughs> what it is about rum. I can like just feel it. But I can drink tequila and nothing happens. Like so Sometimes. I, it has to be a lot. I don't know what it is. For me to not be a drinker, my tolerance when it comes to liquor is very high. It takes a lot for me to feel anything. But what drink put me under? Wine. Yeah. Wine <laughs> puts me under. <laughs> so one night we were doing the margaritas and all of that, and I think I had gotten a um you got some um, pineapple. Reason. No, I got the pineapple chipotle from yeah. the alchemy bar. Mm -hmm. And I was fine. And then later on that night, we were like, okay, we just walked around the casino. And I was like, oh, let me give me a glass of wine. Because the lady had just, you know, poured it out the um the wine chiller. I was like, okay, let me give me a glass of wine. I was sipping on the wine, going to my cabin. By the time I got to my cabin, I didn't remember the walk. <laughs> And I'm like, how does wine do this to me and liquor does it? So wine is what put me under. Well, I would say I didn't necessarily try anything new. I did the Alchemy Sidecar, or you saw in the video, which is Hennessy Sidecar. I've had that before. And the Old Fashioned, I've had that before. But they were made different. And those two drinks, I don't know what she whispering over there. <laughs> But if you saw it in the vlog, them two. That was the vlog that y'all Yeah, saw. them two drinks right there took a brother out. It was like on the video, I said it was an hour later and I still was lit like I had just finished drinking them. So those were the two. Yeah. How do you guys enjoy your actual cruise while creating content for us? We appreciate your content and thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Well, uh, over the years recording a lot, doing a lot of vlogs, vacation vlogs, we learned that it's only certain times that you should be picking up the camera. So we're not shooting everything. We, we see moments that we feel like that you guys are going to enjoy, see some stuff that you guys want to see. And we shoot that and we bring you guys along with us. So it's, it's it comes with experience of yeah, doing it over time. Yeah. yeah, so we didn't have the camera in our hand the whole entire trip. So we were able to enjoy it and give you moments. Yeah. we. I always say we just treat the camera like it's a person that's at the table with us. Right. And we talk to them when we feel like talking to them. And when we don't, we don't. So we don't we don't make the camera an intrusive piece of our vacation. It's a part it, of. It becomes a part, part of. of. Mm -hmm. And we don't record the fluff. All right. So did you notice any kids areas open? Honestly, we did not. I mean, we don't have children. So yeah, like, we, we, like we said about the... Uh, uh, how we record with a focus and we have an eye for certain things. We don't have an eye for when it comes to activities that aren't directly affecting our lifestyle. Right. So I did not notice. I'm sorry. Um, any chance y'all snagged any fun time schedules? Listen, all of that is on oh, your phone yeah. now. Yeah. Um, it is kind of like that. Because mm, you, 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 I collect them. 
they don't have them. I don't know if you can go to the um, guest, guest services. services and get one or not, but no, everything is on your phone now. Even your reservations for the main dining room is on your phone now. Which I think, is, I, I think I like better it though. because you can select what you want to go to and what you want to do. And the app reminds you yeah, it that does. it's coming up first versus you having to remember it. Or take that paper with you everywhere yeah, you, go. you go. Yeah. So it's like the GPS system now where yeah. <laughs> they, it used to be a map. Um, says hey i love your videos thank you so we're um cruising on the same cruise in november for our anniversary um happy pre-anniversary y'all yeah happy anniversary. um so how do you go about booking the bus to the airport it is an excursion actually so once you do a booking with carnival then you can go ahead and start booking your excursions it is considered one of your excursions from your port of call so on day one, if you want to catch the bus from the airport to the port, it's an excursion that you can buy. But if you only want to do it, say you just want to do it leaving the ship to the airport, it's an excursion you can buy. But you're only going to be able to see it once you book because it's going to be customized to your booking. So I'm not able to link it. I know you asked me to put a link, but I'm not able to link it because that is an excursion that's customized towards your itinerary. Um, say, have we ever been to the Cayman Islands before? No. no. And say, how was it getting off the ship? I'm going to be honest with you. Getting off the ship in Miami seemed a little too easy for us. It was very easy. Yeah. When we get off the very. ship here in Virginia, it's we, almost uh, like yeah. going through TSA. <laughs> yeah. Like, right. there's a lot that goes along with it. You got to make sure they're making sure you don't bring any fruit, making sure yeah. you're not... De you have to declare certain things. You, they make it. They sniffing and the dogs and all that. Yeah, we got off. It was like that's it. I really was waiting for the moment where we felt like yeah, we were. Now we weren't U.S. citizens anymore. Yeah, <laughs> we almost just walked off the ship. Yes, it was like oh okay, oh this is yeah. And since we have um passports, they did the face recognition. We walked through the line for face recognition. We sh put our face in the camera. Camera said do. And we walked off. But we actually thought that was why it was that easy. But, but, were, no. but you know, our cousin that was with us, they said it was the same thing. They was able to And they traveled out. with their birth certificates. Yeah. So. so they didn't get checked or anything. Yeah. So even exiting where you have to talk to an officer and no, <laughs> it was way yeah. too easy yeah. for me. So excursions that you took, was it given by the ship? Yes. Yes. Um, usually I am one of those people that I, I am a fan of booking things that are non carnival based because I feel like you get a better value and you get, you know, the, you can find more things that carnival doesn't offer. But in this climate right now, I will say, this is my recommendation that you stick with carnival's excursions because there is. They have to follow the footprint of protocol all right. the way across the board. So with us, when we booked the Duns River thing and people was like, oh my God, all those people on the ship. You got to realize that everybody on that ship, including the people that were running the ship and the entertainment for that ship, they went through the same thing that we went right. through in order to be declared safe to sail. So they have been vaxxed. They are, they have a negative COVID test, all of that. So in this climate, I say stick with carnivals. If, if safety is your main goal, stick with carnivals excursions. So that's what we did for and, every last one of them. And if something happens on that excursion, carnival can't leave they you can't because leave. it's carnivals excursion. Yeah, it's, you're their responsibility. Yep. It's almost like you're but, on their watch. But if you go and do your own stuff and you don't get back in time, you're gonna get yeah, left. You can get left. Yeah. Um, said, did you all do the ship excursion? Answer that. Is walking around the island an option? And was there <laughs> is there a link to the rainbow outfit that I had on over my swimsuit? Y'all ain't gonna let that live, are y'all? <laughs> but um, first question, is it an option to walk around the island? Yes, yeah, it's an yeah. option. Mm -hmm. We tried it, we couldn't do it because it's so hot in Jamaica. And we only had a little bit of time. Yeah, yeah but we tried it. because yeah. we wanted to go to get some jerk chicken and go to the public beach. Yeah. We were walking that way and it was just us outside. Our group of six, us walking around 
and we took our masks down and this security guard came from nowhere i didn't know where the heck he came from and he was like oh you have to put your mask on so walking in that hot heat with yeah. that mask on outside we all looked at each other at the same time and said we're not gonna make it we're going back to the boat we're going back <laughs> to the ship so when we got through the gates and we cleared them when we got on that walkway back to the ship, we took our mask down and we just was like, yep. we're going to have to do, we're going to have to walk around Jamaica another day because it was just too hot. Um, my outfit cover up, I, there's not a link for, yeah. I have tried to find a link, yep. but I got it from Rainbow, Rainbow Shops. Um, I went into the store and I saw them. I have two of them. I went online. They do have them, but they have like 4X. That's it. Um, if you want me to link it, I will link that. Maybe you'll find some other ones that you like. But it's pretty much, it's called a mesh biker short set. It's not a real swim cover up. This is what them hoes be wearing in real life. <laughs> they be wearing this in real life. I just wore mine over my bathing suit. Um, so do you like, do you think Dunn's River Falls will be fun for someone that doesn't know how to swim? Yes. Yes. Yes, um, swimming is not required yeah. in that. I, I don't think we went into water no deeper than our kneecaps. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. How did you pack for this trip? I packed for this very trip. Very light. Very light. Very light. <laughs> I did a pack with me. I don't know if I'm going to put that video up or not. But I will say, if you're new to the channel or you have not seen my pack with me video, I do carry on only. Yep. And I will me link too. that down below. I packed, like I said, very lightly. But in addition to packing our clothing really lightly, we made sure that we packed things that we could clean really well with. Mm -hmm. Hand sanitizer, Lysol wipes, Bactiv. We um, took some of our microband and transferred that into a little spritzer bottle so that we can spray around our cabin and on those high traffic areas. So even when the room store would come in and touch things, you know, you have that, that 24 hour protection. So other than that, that's what we did. Please update your Amazon store. I am. Oh, oh yeah. Before you jump to that, and the reason why we do to carry on only because we've done the check bags, and that takes forever, and we feel like that takes away from time or the vacation. So we like to be able to get straight off the plane and keep on rolling to where we need to go to. Yeah, and yeah. we also realized throughout the years we overpack for no reason. Yeah, you pack a whole bunch of stuff that you that don't you even never wear. touch. Yeah. So it does. It keeps you. It keeps everything intact. And when I say we don't. We don't minimize any of the things that we would normally pack, which is right. crazy. We just find different ways to pack it. So we're, we're not missing out on anything by doing carry on only. Trust me. Um, it said, please update our Amazon list. Listen, by the time this video is edited and up, my Amazon list will be updated. But I will say under each video of our um, trip, there is links. To yeah. everything that you have seen in those videos. And they said that they love the water shoes. The water shoes are linked down below those videos as well. And so go back to this the, one too. Yeah. So we're go gonna back put it, to we're those gonna put videos. We'll put everything that, from the whole trip in this video. In this video. Yep. So all the way down to our outfits and yep. what we wore. Everything. Wore. Yeah. Everything that we can link. Yeah. Say, hey family, we've cruised before on Carnival, but we can't get a clear answer if we can bring a battery operated fan that's about eight by 12. Yeah, you can bring it. And not only that, if you don't want to bring your fan, just ask your room stewardess for one. They'll bring you one. People were asking for fans left, right, and center mm -hmm. because on our ship, people said that they felt like their rooms were warm. Not ours. Not ours. No, man, I our was... room was Antarctica. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, they they have plenty of fans to give Matter you. Matter of fact, we had to turn the one. heat on in there to, to bring that temperature down. Yeah, we couldn't we'll bring get, that temperature up because we <laughs> couldn't get out of the shower. Yeah, it was so cold. So, and the last question is is for Stanley. They say they know that you wear contact lenses because I've been following y'all. <laughs> <laughs> How did you um? Did you have them in when you're in the water? Yes. I did have them on in the water and like I said previously I was mad because I didn't bring my swim goggles so I can open my eyes on the water which you can in contact but it's a big risk because sometimes the water can pull them jokers out your eyes and yeah that's a whole nother subject but yes I wear contacts in the water but I don't lace it like I did yeah but I don't open my eyes up yeah so it's like I don't swim goggles yeah so that is the end of the that's questions it. I know that this video was lengthy but we told y'all to ask the questions and we were going to ask them for y'all yep so hopefully this will 
aid you all in your next Carnival Cruise vacation. Yeah. And on that note, straight from the VA, the dirty, dirty side. Two up, two down. Holla, boom.